Hello and welcome to Mailbox, the non-chill filtered whisky blog. I'm Andy and this is whisky review number 36. What I have for you today is an iconic blended scotch whisky. Um, it's been reviewed god knows how many times but you know, I figured it's my turn now. The Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old. I'm sure the vast majority if not all of you watching the video will have tried it, you'll have heard of it or you'll have seen it on a shop shelf. Johnny Walker is a brand owned by Diageo. Um, the best selling Scotch whisky in the world, in the form of the Johnny Walker Red Label, by Case, um, is this whisky's little brother. Now, Johnny Walker as I say, is a very, very famous brand. You'll be able to find it in supermarkets across the UK and in the world. You'll find it in little corner shops, tucked away at the back on top of a shelf. You know, you, it's one of the most iconic and most recognisable brands. Not only in whisky, um, but I suppose in terms of, of marketing as well. Um, and consumerism. Long word of the day. Now, the Black Label, as I say, is 12 years old and that, for a start, is absolutely cracking because in a day where age statements are disappearing, of all people, Diageo are maintaining an age statement on this mass, what is effectively a mass-produced blended whisky. Bottled at 40%, chock full of caramel colouring, it's almost Coca-Cola, TM. Chill filtered, chock full of colour, bottled at 40%. However, there are approximately 40 different, 40 ish, different malt and grain components in the Johnny Walker Black Label. And um, to be honest with you, one of the main reasons for Diageo's ownership of such a vast amount of distilleries is to produce what is often referred to as blend fodder. Um, and that is basically just large amounts of grain whisky and also having a lot of malt whiskies in your portfolio whose sole purpose is to produce not only grain but single malt whisky which are then destined to go into blends and as Johnny Walker and not only Johnny Walker but I mean Johnny Walker is Diageo's probably best selling brand but on the flip side of that blended whisky in general is the world's best selling form of whisky. There's no doubt about it, whether you've got a bit of malt snobbery, whatever it might be, you might have an agenda against blends, maybe you just genuinely do not like them, maybe you can't get on with them. The fact of the matter is, the vast majority of whisky sold worldwide in every corner of every country, from Timbuktu to Timpoli, is blended whisky. The vast majority of it, I think it's about 95% or something like that, something ridiculous, of the market share is blended whiskey. So, with that aside, let's see what, uh, what it's got on the nose. In terms of colour, I've already mentioned it's, it's all cold, no knickers really. Um, it's fake. So, um, you know, there's that. Um, some nice tears on the glass, actually. Legs, tears, whatever you might want to call them without water because you know it's 40% so I'm not going to bother get that out of the way. You can tell it's actually quite a complex drum. A little bit of an ethanol -y nip. It's a tiny little bit of smoke in the background. You can tell it's complex, but at the same time it's kind of clunky. Um, a lot of toffee, a lot of sweetness. I say you got that, that sort of smoky quality in the background as well. It's a bit herbal, uh, herbally sort of note to it, and a bit of citrus. A bit of citrus as well. It's interesting that there is the smoke in there because when you think of some of the distilleries that are included in Diageo's portfolio. You can think of Talisker, Lagavulin, Carlila, 
just to name a few. You know, and they're um, they can produce some really peat spirit. So, you know, I think one of the only I'm not saying it is the only, but one of the only um, malt distilleries that doesn't provide spirit for the Johnny Walker range is Oban, um, because uh, Oban's capacity is quite small, and you just can't produce enough to commit to giving you know enough spirit towards uh, putting the blends together. So, as well as the black label, there is the red label, as I mentioned before, which is a no-age statement um, blended Scotch whisky. You have the green label, which has just come back in, which is good. The green label is a bell syndrome. I don't have a bottle of that at the minute. Um, I had the old one, but I drank it because it was good. So uh, there's that. Um, the blue label which is the what you might describe as the higher end or uh, to me new overpriced and um, there's also a couple of travel retail exclusives and um, in addition to the black label 12 there's also the double black because you know double black another market employee anyway back onto the whiskey going back into the nose then I'm getting sort of currants and raisins that smokiness is a bit more prevalent now. For the most part, though, it is all about sort of the toffee and um, conf general confectionery, <laughs> if you will. Uh, a little bit of chocolate in there, maybe. So, onto the palette now. bit of awkward eye contact there. That smoke makes itself known again. And then so does that really nice sort of warm, chewy toffee. Again, you've got the citrus there, you've got like orange peel. I've got a bit of coffee now. So I can really nice sort of um, fresh Arabica um, espresso. Bits of um, cinnamon or cassia bark and some anise. So you do have that sort of spiciness to it as well. In terms of mouthfeel, considering it's chill filtered and it's bottled at 40%, it's actually quite, it's not thin, it's not too thick, it's, in fact it's not thick at all really. It, basically it's not too thin, it's not very watery, it's surprising how much texture it's actually maintained. Um, I'm just going to go back for another. Hmm. Interestingly enough, on the nose, I'm getting a little bit of a sherbet note now, lemon sherbet, which is quite unusual. I've never got that before. Hmm. Again, there's that herbal quality. Again, with the toffee. Again, with the coffee. I think you're seeing where I'm going with this. There's also a tiny, tiny little bit of. Um, well, how can I best describe it? Almost coastal um, note to it. So, a little bit. Tiny little bit, sort of like iodine-y sort of flavour. It's not too prevalent in there. I'm just kind of getting it in towards the finish. As I go back onto the nose now, palm violet sweets, palm violet sweets and leather. Quite a rounded dram. It's really not. Um, it's not giving much away. There is that little bit of smoke in the background, just playing its part. And for the most part, it's just quite a rich, sort of silky um, hit of those sort of sweet, sweet tones. Sort of like again, your, your toffees and that. So 
the finish a little bit spicy, a little bit woody, and you do have sort of like a lemon lemon rind cutting through it as well, quite a sharp uh, sharp flavour, um, which is still going now. It's kind of it's almost bitter. It does get quite bitter. So black label retails, generally speaking, in the Asda's, the Tesco's of the world, for about twenty five to thirty quid. You can pick it up for cheaper than that. Like I picked this up for 20 quid in Tesco uh, a couple of months back. And it's uh, it's not the first bottle I've had, let's put it that way. Because it is one of those whiskies I think, that is so recognisable, so easily accessible, and so approachable, that it's always good to have in. And on that note, on to the scores. Um, I'm going to give this whiskey the Johnny Walker Black Label. One of the best selling blended Scotch whiskies in the world. An 83 out of 100. I think it's got a lot of quality components in there. Um, I think that, in terms of value for money, with the age statement as it stands, I think it is very good value for money. I think it's good to have it in. I think it would be a good introduction to smokier whiskey, it's like a transition whiskey for, uh, for Isla haters. Oh, just kept coming in, sorry about that. Um, and uh, I think overall um, it's good to have on the shelf. You know, it's, it's a good solid whiskey and uh, there's not much more to say about it than that. It's iconic, it's popular and there's a reason that it's popular. So on that note, I've been Andy, thanks for watching, see you soon.